Hey guys, What's welcome, up? welcome to Testing Normal, episode 34. 34. This is Curtis, this is Jordan, and this is a podcast where we talk about anything and everything we want to. Booyah. Booyah. I'm excited. <sighs> I'm excited also. I'm feeling yeah. pretty good. I took a nap today. I heard a rumor that you're going to hang out with someone after the show. Yeah, I'm going to hang out with somebody after the show and actually during the show. What? Yes. No yes. Way. Today, we have the privilege, nay, the honor, nay, the pure elation. Not nay, and. And yeah. hanging <laughs> out with the special Jono. <laughs> Jono, uh, hey man, hey. special guest coming from down under, straight up from down under. Yeah, he's still uh, getting used to standing, technically standing upright. Yeah, yeah, he uh, had to change a little bit of his uh, orientation, his spatial awareness, because he's yeah. from the land of was it Melbourne? No, no, no Sydney. No. Sydney. Sydney. Oh, you're a yeah. straight Sydney boy. Yeah, Sydney. Okay, yep. straight Sydney boy. Yeah. Does it weird you out that the water twists the other way? Does like does that affect you? Does it actually though? Yeah. You know, it does. Apparently, it does, for sure. Yeah. But uh, you never notice it because Australian toilets flush. It's like a wave over the top of each Wait, other. Wait, what, what? Yeah. It's Seriously? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it shoots out. It it's, goes kind of from the back forward. It goes, like, from the back and just, like, and then, over itself. Is that, so interesting. And is that because like, you defecate so much larger? <laughs> or, like, is it is it a different it's density? It's a different system, it Because like. of being... You know, at that hemisphere. Yeah. Look, I don't. I don't know if it's because we defecate any larger. <laughs> um, you know, could be, could be. Uh, but I, look, I think it's just um, I think higher it's fiber intake. Just a, typically, I think it's just it's a design possible. thing. But we never clog the toilets. Though, okay. So I that's think actually that's, a I subject we've brought up before, and I've had really? often. Yeah, I've had. I, I have a. What do you say? Not an insecurity. Maybe it's an insecurity where I fear the toilet not flushing, like oh. clogging. When I go to like certain places, I or a phobia for it, that. it frequently happens to me though when I'm at like terrible situations. Mm. So I'm either in this situation where I'm like, okay, I need to like push and cut, and like kind of, <laughs> kind of you know, push par- and cut. I need I need to parse yes. it up a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just catching the lingo <laughs> as it happens. Because here. if you if you go too heavy too fast, man, I'll tell you what. Even without using the TP, it'll just start clogging. It's a, yeah, it's a rough man. situation. Yeah, and you have to get the metal coat hanger out. It's a disaster. Wait. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never exactly. had to do that. Oh, it's not. You've never had to do that? It's a not. metal coat hanger? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I can honestly I mean, I've used, say I've never done let's, that. Let's talk about the Shop utensils that have been necessary to get some of this stuff down. I've done, of course, metal coat hanger. Um, I've thrown a... I've done a stick. Yeah. Like, I've yeah. done a stick. Yeah. Just like, just a normal stick. <laughs> Um, so much is happening so quickly. Plastic <laughs> like, coat hanger <laughs> has been happening. I, I don't even know um, what to do. Let's see what else was there. Plastic coat hanger, um, and then plungers. Naturally, plungers, of course. Yeah, yeah. but it's real. It happens. Yeah, so, it does. It does. So steak, you get steak knife. Steak knife. Yeah, oh, you done the yeah, steak knife? Yeah, yeah, steak knife. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. just add that into your. That's list. a yeah. the. It have to be a pretty long steak knife. Yeah, no, no, not really, because Australian toilets are also very shallow. Oh, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you should, you should pull that mic in just a little yeah. bit, so you, so you get, we get your deep. Oh awesome yeah, yeah. Awesome. There you go. Put it right in there. There you go. go. Put it in. It's kind of like I'm kissing it a little bit. There. Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, yeah, yep. you gotta make out with it, man. Cool. Um, All right. so have you guys ever had a situation where you've gone into a room to use a restroom, use a toilet, and the toilet is like awkwardly low profile? I went to a friend's house the other day, and I had to use the restroom. Really? And it was really low? And the toilet was, I think, probably mid-shin height. What? Mid-shin. Like I That's could be, very low. It, I could be slightly exaggerating, but it felt like I was in a preschool. Like Why do you like think a, toilets are so different from country to country? I mean, besides like the underdeveloped countries. like That, right. that makes sense to me. But Well, like other than Australia, but... I didn't know that. Like Japan, like they've got like well, their the yeah. toilets can like make them dinner too. Theirs are like iRobot toilets basically. Yeah. 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 It doesn't seem like the U.S. invests in technology towards toilet. No, this hasn't improved hardly at all. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. But I just, I, just, I, I don't know. I, I'll tell you what I do enjoy though. Maybe this is just something as maturity I've grown, yeah. you know, and wisdom maybe. Um, I enjoy the bidet. Yes. I was hoping that's what you were really? going to say. I so good. thoroughly thoroughly enjoy the bidet so good do you have one yeah no i don't but there are attachments that you can buy to get get the toilet seat and it has it built right in there now it's amazing yeah you just attach it to the water line oh it's wonderful like so it bifurcates to be able to flush the toilet and have a bidet the 
It's and delightful. You, you can completely just bypass TP if you've got a bidet. You definitely the, can. It's unbelievable. You definitely can. Mm. Hmm. Um, I, I think the reason I, I wouldn't bypass the TP completely is because I don't have... You want to drip dry? Well, I want to... I want to be a little bit more dry, perhaps. Yeah. But also, like, what if I got some? What if I got some Klingons? I don't know it. Yeah. You know, Klingons are real. Yeah, well, Klingons for checking. Yeah, but yeah, for checking. If you if you get like a high, you got to have the high pressure (laughs) today. (laughs) You know, and that thing will just (laughs) boom. Whatever's on there is gone. (laughs) It's great. Love it. Have mm-hmm. you done warm bidets? I have. I've yeah. never done warm bidet. I've always had like a bidet that was just normal water temperature, mm-hmm. which is a little brisk. Yeah, it can be a little bit like frightening brisk? at first. Yeah. Brisk? Give you a jump. I feel like, I feel like warm would be Whoop. more sanitary. Mm. Oh, I don't think it makes a difference with sanitation wise. Then why do I always say wash your hands with warm water? I think it just helps with the soap. Of exfo- uh, what's it called? Not exfoliating, but bubbling. Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. But. I don't know about the the, the, the <laughs> well. There's that the southern region. <laughs> Actually, I think warm water would allow for bacteria to be. I mean, yeah, bacteria thrive better in a warmer environment than cold. So that is your mom's here. That is correct. We're talking about bidets already. The Sorry. bidet. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We delved right. Have in you guys seen the it. SNL skit about the bidet? No. With oh, Zach no. Galf. Zach Galifianakis. Oh, I love him. And Kristen Bagley cool. or whatever her name is. It's a satchel. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> it is hilarious. He goes. They basically. I don't think we could. Could we show it? Or do we get taken? No, do we we get taken? definitely get taken. Uh, oh, I hate these copyright issues. Um, but basically, they go in and they're talking to the the bellhop, yeah. and they're saying, "Oh, oh, oh, my uh, Uber Eats, yeah, Uber Eats delivery, get my Uber Eats delivery coffee. <laughs> Look at that." In a, in a custom cup. Custom cup. What a fancy cup is that? Look at that. Seriously. I do love the merch. It's so good. It's so you good. guys can find these on Amazon if you want. Just check it out. Nine ninety nine. Amazon. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I'm going to just clarify because if if I don't, I'm going to go away and actually check. <laughs> is that you being legit here? No. No. It's no, not. no, 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 no yeah, I wish. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think so. We'll have to work on that though. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be cool. We should work on that. Seriously. On Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, those Zach Galifianakis and Kristen... Bagley, I think her name is. I can't remember. Kristen Wiig? What's her name? Is it Kristen Wiig? Yeah, Kristen yeah, Wiig. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, you were really close. I was super close. There's okay. a G in it. Samsonite. Um, <laughs> Swanson, Samson, Swanson. <laughs> and they go in and ask the bellhop, like, hey, who, or the guy that's kind of introducing to the room. They're like, hey, just curious, does the bathroom have, they're in the room getting a tour, does the bathroom have a bidet? <laughs> and <laughs> they're like, the bellhop guy's, yes, it comes standard with a bidet. And then if anything should happen to the bidet, <laughs> is there a repairman on call 24 hours a day? We have a plumber that can help, yes. And should the water pressure of the bidet be insufficient, <laughs> would <laughs> said pressure be able to be increased? <laughs> and like it just goes through all what? these hilarious questions investigating the bidet. About a bidet. About a bidet. Anyways, it's, it's hilarious. So I just wanted to... I don't know how we got on that topic. I have no idea but either, man. Like, <laughs> oh, toilet's flushing. Yeah, we were toilet's toilet flushing. Like, because, <laughs> because in Australia, they're apparently a wave machine. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so Jono, I wanted to just kind of talk to you a little bit about, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty, an ex- it seems like Australia is such an exciting thing to mm-hmm. most people in the lower 48 states because it's not very, it's so far away. Yeah. I don't think people realize how far away it is. Yeah. It's like, what is it? 16 hour flight? Yeah, roughly. Like, uh, yeah, it depends on where you're flying into. But 14 to 16 hours. Yeah, 14 yeah. to 16. Gosh. I flew there when I was in high school. And there's no stop in between. No, not high school, college. Or else you're in trouble. No, you, I mean, you can go to Hawaii. It's right, like 10 Hawaii. hours to Hawaii and then five hours. Yeah, but I mean, if, it, if you stop guess, before that. Well, New Zealand. Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, you New get Zealand. that seat as, <laughs> yeah. an, as a souvenir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but New Zealand's closer, right? Yeah, New like, Zealand's like three hours from Sydney. So, okay. yeah. So, that'd be a little bit closer. Yeah. Have you been yeah. there? That, I have. I have a number of times, yeah. Have so. you heard me talk about my friend, uh, Bill English, who has the same name as their former prime minister oh he got tagged by what was it some he got tagged by xena the war princess yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. i remember hearing something it's, about this yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah. that's yep. it that i'm like yeah, maybe maybe you should go there or yeah. sell your twitter account to <laughs> that guy yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> i went to brisbane yeah okay. and it was phenomenal it was amazing There's a lot of sheep there right brisbane no uh, no not there so. new like, zealand new zealand yeah a lot of sheep oh, in yeah. new zealand yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but for people in this area, Australia is so far away, but it seems like such a, like a cool area because they have, I, I don't, we don't really hear 
much negative publicity publicity about Australia. Like, mm. I don't feel like. Do you get much vibes? The of only vibes I've ever gotten is Australia? like from people that like guns. They're like Australia hates. Okay, guns. yeah, guns, and then they say, "Oh, it's just a bunch." And of it's always show videos bunch of, of them bunch chopping of into pieces. Yeah, or they, you know, right. their grandparents were, you know, in prison and they didn't want them anymore, and they've sent them there or something like that. Right. That's the only thing I ever hear. Mm. I'm like, it looks like fairly similar to here. It's just you know upside down, and they have big bridges and concert halls. Gotchas. and kangaroos <laughs> and, and hillsong <laughs> and hillsong we, yeah, we do I mean, have, yeah yeah we have hillsong that's yeah. it but you know? john yeah. i wanted to talk to you a little bit about there's a lot of debate and discussion going on in our political discourse mm. about health care yes. universal health care of course um and then going into kind of more almost socialistic policies mm-hmm. and i I personally would lean probably a little bit more towards the social health care. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I do lean. I do agree with it. I think there should be a form of socialized health care in the same way there's a form of socialized firemen and socialized uh, roads and all this sort of aspects. Um, have you experienced much of the pros and cons? What are some of the ex- your experiences with the health care in Australia that you've found to be either negative or positive? Yeah, so look, obviously... I mean, obviously, I'm biased, but um, I I think the Australian healthcare system is oh, I, look. Every system has its flaws, but um, they've got a pretty good thing going on down there. Um, so you've got basically everyone's born and just gets Medicare, right? Like it's just a thing mm-hmm. that you have, um, and Medicare pretty much ensures that you're always going to be able to have healthcare, and um, and it's not going to cost you anything. Um, but there are limitations to it. So, like, you can't choose your doctor. You can't, okay. um, you know, if you need to get a big procedure done, they tell you what hospital it's going to be in and when it's going to be. Okay. Um, you don't have much choice in that. Um, but we also have a private health insurance system as well. So, if you want to and if you're in a position where you can, you can also get private health insurance. What, what percentage of people do that? Would you say um, is that a very most, common thing? Yeah, it's pretty common. And so, why? Why would um, it be common? Because it it just enables you more freedom. So essentially, you can pick your doctor, pick your hospital, um, when you're going to get your procedure done. All of that kind of stuff becomes your choice. And so, um, essentially, Medicare is designed so that um, basically the people that cannot afford to have private health insurance, they're still going to get coverage. They're still going to get medical treatment. They're not just going to be hung out to dry or or loaded with this tremendous. So no amount matter of debt. how much you make, mm-hmm. you always will have that Medicaid. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're always going to have it, but um, but the majority of Australians do have private health as as well. Really. So, mm, and, yeah. And if you say if you have your own private primary care mm-hmm. provider, oh, you should hand me some of that. Does this is great by the guy by the way guys that are listening Jordan makes amazing smoked jerky and this is yeah. like a bad batch too like I'm not I love it I actually option. really like this one really I like how dry it is it's dry but it's that's because it's been in the fridge. I like the flavor it's also it. really salty I think I mm. I don't know how I got it more salty I think I'm craving craving salty maybe it is um <laughs> <laughs> uh, um but if you go to like a private doctor or yep. provider do you Will they charge the Medicaid insurance as well as the private insurance, or, or do you can you only charge the private insurance because that wasn't assigned to you? Um, no. So like, if I'm just going to a regular GP checkup, I'm going to go to uh, my my doctor. Bulk bills is what it's called, which means they bill Medicaid okay um, entirely. So I'm not uh, I'm not paying anything for that that checkup. There's no copay. There's mm. if I need blood drawn. I'm not paying for any of that. Okay. Um, and and that's all on Medicare. But uh, if I wanted to go to the dentist, that's going to be private health insurance. So, so dentists are not covered under Medicaid? Not for... So for children, yes. Oh, but, wow. Um, okay. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, but Medicare pretty much um, no, wow. de- no dental. Yeah. Very interesting. Yep. Wow, very interesting. Yeah, dentist, <clears throat> dental care in the US is one of the biggest issues I've seen with healthcare. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, working in healthcare personally, I'll have patients that come to me all the time with massive, you know, dental abscesses or, right. you know, just really terrible dental care. And what we have is we have a form of Obamacare that's still currently active, Affordable Health Care Act. And it's um, not very affordable. It doesn't really cover, <laughs> it doesn't true. really cover dental care that well. Mm. I mean, it covers it, but like you can't get to, into a dentist for like six months. Or four months. And if you have a dental abscess, you're like, well, basically, you're just on antibiotics for I four only go months. every six months anyway. Yeah. But if you have a <laughs> massive, is, yeah. massive abscess, you don't want to wait yeah. six months. I just pull it myself. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so that would be one area I think might be lacking is the need for dental care, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely. So the the dental care, obviously, um, there there is a lack there. Um, but again, like if you, I don't know the numbers, but there's a really high percentage of Australians that are covered by private health insurance. And the other thing, because the other thing in Australia that's different to here, and this is kind of like taking a bit of a rabbit trail, but um, we're all about those. There's 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 a lot um, there's a lot less of a gap between like the poor and the, oh, and really? the wealthy. So okay. you have you have the, you basically have far less people. Is there living. higher? There's probably higher taxes. It's higher taxes. Right. Yeah, for sure. But um, you, you basically end up with a with a society in which there's far less people living in, in poverty. In poverty um, but then we also don't have the same level of extreme wealth that you have in the US. So there's just a much, much bigger middle class. So and I think that probably contributes to the fact that so many people are covered by private health insurance. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think in my head, my first instinct is to be like, yeah, that's what we want. We want more middle class. Like it's more middle. It's more opportunity for more people. Um yeah. but at the same time I have like I see the trepidation of certain people who are like, well I want to be able to, to Neil says hi to do whatever I <laughs> want to do. <laughs> That's like, I, I like that. <laughs> like, I was like, I didn't. I don't think I've ever seen his name spelled out. Yeah, right. You know, but I know his name. Is that is that Neil, my son, or Neil, my dad? Uh, he says hi, dad. Though, so I'm, I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna Neil, Neil venture a guess. It's not your dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Neil, my son. If Good. your dad calls you that, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit weird. We're gonna weird. we're gonna go on a really big <laughs> rabbit trail here in a second. <laughs> like, why's your dad call you that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> weird conversation <laughs> but um yeah so do you think that the uh socialized approach to healthcare in australia combined with the private um you know subsidized format do you think maybe that works and and only works kind of because of the way that I mean, Australia is an island. Yeah, I, you know, is, I mean, it's a continent, so like it doesn't have the influx of population mm-hmm. control issues, and it's not yeah. necessarily population control as much as it is, like in some yeah, way. Population control sounds like you're killing people, off. right? But I mean, like, I, I guess my it's head harder like, to immigrate. There. I wrap my head around That's social. True. You're a really good swimmer, or you have wings. Yeah, 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 or, or a decent boat. You know? Or, but even yeah. then, you probably, you know, they have people monitoring the coasts. Yeah. Um, we're here, like I am all for social programs. I, especially healthcare and even college. Mm. I'm really for that. Cause I think, do you guys have yep. socialized yep. college so, too? Yeah, exactly. I'm all for that. I think that's amazing. But I, I just can't wrap my head around how the two areas of, you know, give us your poor, give us your weak, give us your hungry, give us these, your people, but having a socialized health, um, and socialized, you know, programs, I don't see how those two work together. What did you see this week that um, they were they they passed something and I don't know exactly the details on it, but like basically if you're immigrating to the U.S. and you can't prove that you can afford health care within 30 days, you will be turned down like that. That's like a rule. Interesting. Now. So I I'm all for as many people that want to immigrate here and start a life and work hard and do whatever they want. I'm all for that. I'm all for completely getting rid of the borders. Even mm. I'm all for that. You but I think you can't get rid of them. But then I think you can't. The border do, will still be there. Well, but I mean, getting rid of the, <laughs> of the. Yeah, I know. I know, know what you mean. Crossing <laughs> yeah. border yeah, yeah, control. Yeah, sure. But <clears throat> then I don't think you can have the socialized programs. Mm. Yeah, it does make it difficult if you have an open border, and you've just got people coming yeah, in. Coming in. Yeah. I mean, we have a huge continent. Yeah. B- below us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and above us, and above. Yeah, well, co- not continent, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The Canadians yeah. don't seem that interested in coming here, to be honest. No, they don't. No, yeah. Their yeah. money's worth less for no yeah. reason at all. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 But, I mean, I just, I can't I can't mix the two. And so, I in my head, the reason I feel like Australia has been so successful in that is because they have such a controlled environment. Mm. And yeah. I think that helps. I think so. And I think, but I think population size too. So, we have 25 million people. Uh, you guys have... 350 million so yeah. uh, that makes a tremendous difference as well totally. um, to a lot of things totally but also the it's not only you have less people but you have a significant amount of natural resources mm-hmm. for the for the amount of people you have yeah so australia is one of the largest depositories of like they have a huge amount of gold yeah gold and i don't know about oil i'm not sure how much oil they have gold and uh gold coal is coal okay is huge in australia gold um, coal but what they don't have let me tell you what they're running out on pretty dang quick water 
That's po- true. Potable water is freaking. They're on hardcore droughts going left and right yep. right now in Australia. Yep, it's terrifying. We it should, is. We should start like a desalination there. They have so in Sydney they have a desalination plant mm-hmm. um, that they built like. Uh, it was like 15 years ago now because we're in this crazy drought and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden we came out of the drought. So the desalination plants didn't get used. I think they were first switched on last year. <laughs> no so, way. Yeah, yeah, which wow. is pretty crazy. So they just sat there for yeah, wow. better part of a decade. Well, I don't know if you heard about in South Africa, they were having these, um, like it's called like day zero mm-hmm. where they were getting to the point where they're like, we literally will not have water to give to our people. Yeah. Like it's getting to the point where like, Unless it rains like heavily here, like we're not going to do be able it's to so provide to potable that, water. Like, we don't think about that. Like, well, we don't personally, especially here. in Oregon. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. yeah. we're like uh, we've enough. We, yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> empty the much, dam out because we've got too much in there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about like where to put it. Right. Yeah, yeah. But as far as resources go, Australia does have a, a healthy amount of resources. They have a low population count compared to the size of the land and mm-hmm. their resources. So I think that that program is kind of the perfect setup for it. It makes sense. It yeah. works. Yeah. Um, and but it's, it's also been, it's also been like a part of Australian culture for so long now as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Like mm-hmm. it's something that's been there for years and like, I think it's 30, 40, I don't know. It's a long time since Medicare oh, okay. so quite came, a in, came into being. And so it's so like, basically now you have a whole generation of people who have never known anything else. Um, yeah. And so it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just in, embedded in the culture. Whereas here it's, I mean, it's so hard. We're to, all over the place here. Yeah, it's so hard to implement something like that when. Well, I mean, I think I think we saw that with Obamacare, right? Like he had. That's yeah. what he wanted to do. He wanted to implement social medicine, and actually, hey, it's a lot harder than than it than it seems. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's quite a difficult task. But um, I don't know. Look, I think there's a system that could work here, but yeah, I, I have no suggestions as to what right, that yeah. would be. You it's know, just fun to talk about. Yeah. Well, another question I had for for you pertaining to Australia, I was just thinking about this, and if, if you don't know, it's totally okay. Um, I was thinking about the Aborigines, mm. and I was thinking about the Native Americans. I was thinking about Quigley Down Under. <laughs> Quigley Down Under. It's like one of my dad's. I did think movies. about Dundee a little bit, but <laughs> um, <laughs> Steve Owen. Uh, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Let, me, yeah. let me throw my Hail Mary. Sorry, Steve. Um, but <laughs> was there like? Don't swim that close. Was there any like period of significant? <laughs> Uh, persecution of the Aborigine people, and yeah. was there reparations at any point? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we were probably worse to Aborigines than than you guys were. Um, oh, really? To, to Native Americans? Yeah. So Oof, we were pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> we were pretty that's, bad. That's uh, that's 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 um, setting things up there pretty far. Yeah, it was it was horrendous. So I'm not. Sh- I can't remember when it was exactly the the date, but. Um, pretty much, this is really horrible. I'm just going to precursor this with that. But basically, it was legal in Australia to hunt Aborigines. Um, Whoa, what? Until... Okay, that's worse. Not that what? long ago. Like, I mean, probably a hun- over 100 years. But yeah. I mean, not... It really wasn't that long ago. And then, and then once they got through that phase, they said, now we're going to... We're going to breed out any Aborigines that are left. So, what they did was like they went and them? took... Yeah, so they went and took all of these babies from their families and put them inserted with white them into white families. Um, and so they, they now are called the stolen generation. Um, wow. And so that was um, a horrendous... I never knew about this. Yeah, it was a horrendous thing that we, we decided to do. Um, and then um, it kind of all came... It was 1977, I believe, when Aborigines were finally recognized as humans. And given like a right to to vote and things of that nature oh my god um so uh but even to this day um you would still see the the repercussions of yeah. those decisions like it's um it's yeah. really really um sad uh what happened and um yeah so i mean look it's yeah it's a, it's a bloody and horrible history mm-hmm. um do they have aboriginal like we have native american mm, not colonies but native american what do we call them? Uh, like reservations. Lands. Yeah, reservations. Thank yeah. You. Do they have <laughs> so <laughs> almost like we Aboriginal reservations for them? Yeah. So not in the same way that you guys have. Um, we have. So we actually, to be honest, so our our government only officially apologized to the Aborigines not 
like 10 years ago oh, so okay. i mean it's that was pretty only fresh. something that happened pretty recently um but there are things like i you've probably seen the big rock in the middle of the country uh uluru yeah it's like the big red big red big red rock um so there are sites like that that are really important um so to, they gave them a rock and so well yeah <laughs> yeah no not even that though they didn't even give them the rock there it's it's just um it's just that there are there are certain things now that are not allowed to be done so people climbed that rock for years and years and years and years um and it was something that was quite upsetting to the indigenous people that lived in that area mm. um because this is a sacred site for them mm-hmm. and so now no you can't climb Ayers Rock or Uluru anymore okay. um, and so there are other places like that around the country too where there are, there's a lot more regulation around them and things that you can and can't do okay. um, but there's no there's not nothing like here where the specific land was given back um, okay. that hasn't that hasn't happened gotcha so. are there many aborigine people or are there like collections of aboriginals that have like literally like stayed in the past like or just live in hardcore out in the out in the what do you call it the not the desert yeah the, the outback the outback yeah. yeah yeah it is a desert though yeah but yeah but the, the steakhouse yeah the steakhouse yeah the steakhouse, uh, staying in the steakhouse. So, <laughs> here's a question um how authentic is outback steakhouse you yeah, know not it's not at all like, not at all yeah no 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 oh, like out, outback steakhouse is like is like just a, an american steakhouse uh, <laughs> with but, the but lot of you, australian names do you eat like are bloom and onions something that you eat all the time like, no no like, like i don't even think they well actually i saw an outback steakhouse well we were just we've been living there and i was like oh my gosh outback steakhouse Wait, in australia was, yeah it's come to That's australia kind of weird. yeah but no uh so i mean i guess there's bloom and onions there but no no people don't just eat we have onion rings. Isn't you know? it weird how we do things like that? <laughs> yeah. It's America's the only country that's like, they're just stuck up enough that they actually named a cheese after themselves and it's not even real. Yeah. Like, like you don't yeah, go American to, you don't go to Canada. Is and American make, cheese synonymous with cheddar cheese? No. It's no, not no, the no, same no, thing? No, no, no. It's like Kraft Singles, like American cheese, like that gooey, like not cheese kind of cheese product. Oh, okay. That's American cheese. But you don't go to Canada and order Canadian bacon. They're not. They're, no, yeah, no, they're not that proud. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, but I think you guys named it Canadian, Canadian bacon. bacon. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They call it, they call it back bacon. Oh, really? Back yeah. Bacon. So, like, can I have a back bacon pizza? Is that what they say? I don't think they even do that. Just, I, just, I think they would be bacon. like, "Why would you put this on pizza?" And <laughs> yes. I'd be like, "It's delicious. That's why. Like, you should do that." It is, dude. Good. Well, I don't want to go too far from this, but the subject I wanted to bring up tonight that was really interesting to me because we've been talking about you know social programs. Mm. Um, there was so Stockton's mayor is uh, twenty nine years old. So Stockton, Stockton California. Yeah, Stockton, California yeah, okay. is a twenty nine year old mayor. Mayor. That's, that's pretty young. And he wanted to implement the UBI. And see, really, yeah. So universal basic income, which is a guaranteed freedom dividend, a uh, guaranteed certain amount of income to a, an individual for life, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a running platform that one of the current candidates, he's in the top ten. He's still like he just got like oh, he a huge just, amount of fundraising. There, he's actually getting recognized now. Andrew, um, Yang. Andrew Yang, yeah, he was also on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's an interesting guy to listen to. Mm-hmm. He is. Um, I, lo- I love his tagline. The what is it? um. If you don't like Trump, and there's nothing more opposite than an Asian guy that's good at math. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's um, true, right? But maybe an Asian woman. Um, well, yeah, that's true. <clears throat> that, that's more. There you go. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, this this mayor, he 29 year old mayor, decided he wanted to implement a form of universal basic income and see the effects. It was like eight, it's an 18 month study and it's been going for just under a year and he distributes $500 monthly stipends to the city's poorest families Mm -hmm. um, as a trial basically to see what are they spending their money on? And so the, the money, I think they gave it, they gave them to like on a card yeah, and then they can obviously track what those cards get spent on. But they Mm -hmm. said, you spend it on whatever you feel like you need to for your family. Right. Um, and they found that about 90% of the money went to <laughs> buying food and clothes. Hmm. So it was like, it was literally like everybody that was kind of an opponent to this was saying, no, these are going to be like abused. You're going to just see them spending it on video games or, you know, alcohol or whatever. Like they're like, you're just going to basically, you're going to allow them to just be, you know, s- basic slugs. Make a decision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
but they're they're also like also this is going to prevent them from working they're going to just be making money now they're not going to work but they found that the number of people that actually were in these low-income positions actually more of them got jobs Hmm. after they started getting this universal basic income and only one it was like one or two percent of the individuals out of the how many let me see how many it was um only one to two percent of them um currently weren't working while they were getting the ubi really yeah and how many was the the sample um it was 150 people oh hmm. so they so less than a percent yeah, so a lot of it went towards education expenses, transportation, insurance, self-care. Um, one one lady that had spent some of the money to help pay for her student loans. Um, yeah. But it was just like, this is, that was, even though it is a micro, micro example, you know, it's not necessarily applicable to the entire U.S., it seemed like this was a perfect example how low income could benefit. Well, from I haven't seen the numbers, UBI. but I know that as Andrew Yang has expanded to different states that he is running in, he does a certain amount of people that his campaign pays out the thousand dollars a month to for like this year as an experiment. Like he's putting his money where his mouth is saying, I believe in this and I think this will make a difference. So yeah. there's like a few, he did it like somewhere in the Northeast, I think, right? It's each state that he keeps expanding to from what I understand. What I does could, that mean? Expand to. So like they were there, were they're polling next. Like, so like, if oh, they're okay. in where he's touring. like yeah like they were in you. iowa and like wherever right. they're kind of like the next state okay. that they're well that's gonna help you get a bunch of fundraising he'll be able to do that better yeah yeah that's interesting dude tell me about this uh kate brown thing that you saw that you had mentioned with vaping <clears throat> oh so she's like it, i don't know if it's her directly it was kind of like a she's trying to like basically ban vaping in oregon mostly mm. like not just vaping but like also like cannabis industry which i don't we've mentioned this before but in oregon because we produce so much of it we have like such a good climate for it mm-hmm. we've like six, for cannabis yeah mean? we're like six yeah. years back stock but, of the stuff and like if we stop producing it today everyone could keep using what they're using and we wouldn't run out for six years that's crazy so some of what they've been doing is like concentrating it down making different like type of medicines or like oils stuff like that why is she, why is she trying to ban cannabis the, oil well, like, because of like the, I get jewels, because of the jewels, yeah, because of those oil? vaping, because it's, it's they're not synonymous though. It, well, they kind of are in the sense that some of the people that were getting hurt were kids that were ordering from like these Chinese places. They'll ship anything anywhere. Yeah, right. And they're is, these like non-regulated vape pens that did have marijuana in them. So they had THC. <clears throat> it's but, none of these people that like producing it. That, right. I and mean, they have like strict, strict, strict rules in right, Oregon. Super like, regulated. And tested like constantly to the point where not everyone can go grow. It costs, it's it's quite a bit of upfront capital to get going in that. Right. Like those guys, they're, they're regulated more than like food. Yeah. So, like food that gets put into the Every grocery store. Every chemical that's in that They're tested monitored. more than going and buying a tomato in the store. Like it's, it's quite ridiculous. But I mean, it's good, but in the sense that I mean, I, I like the idea, like, if I'm do. going to use a substance, I would like to know what exactly is in it. Like, no, no, no. I'm I'm not disagreeing with that. I guess more so I'm saying maybe we should regulate the food more. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> there's true. A, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of junk out there. If we're so into that and we're in saying that, and maybe we should regulate that a totally. little bit more too. Um, but yeah, it's just, they're looking at it in Oregon. It's like, oh my gosh. Like, there's some things that were that were extreme that I was like, eh, I'm kind of on the fence about this. But this, I'm like... Okay, this was this was literally well, like wasn't unregulated she, people that it's were. It's interesting. She was this. pushing for I think during her campaign. I could be wrong, but she was pushing for um, like like decriminalizing drug use. Really? Yeah. There was there was something that well, I, I know saw that at Oregon point, as a whole is is trying to decriminalize a lot of things. Yeah, she was trying to decriminalize like the use of heroin and like the penalties of these certain substances not selling but consumption yeah the consumption yeah. of them um and it's interesting that there's you know i guess i guess my my thoughts are is she attacking the right thing in that situation i i, I think it's she she tends to move with the people and i, I this is just my opinion mm-hmm. it just she tends to kind of move with the whole of the people that are loud and mm-hmm. And then, like, I'm gonna do this. I've got all this power. I'm gonna make you happy, kind of thing. Gotcha. Which is fine. Like, I, whatever. I, w- sometimes we differ on things, and sometimes we don't. You know. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So basically, the issue, and I don't know if you heard about this when you were in Australia. There was a bunch of issues going on with jewel pins, and people using um, just wrecking their lungs. Like, well, 
and in a lot of the oh right. people that okay, have yeah with the vaping been getting yeah, yeah this lung mm-hmm. disease yep. has been from people using bootleg vape pins yeah that have the there's a study that i kind of referenced a couple podcasts ago that show that there's certain lipids that are in them that are attaching to the lungs and causing pulmonary infections and pulmonary scarring and a bunch of other you know difficulties with just getting oxygen into your body mm-hmm. um but it seems like the real issue is banning these bootleg you know substances that are coming into the u.s i don't know it's not that easy to ban something if it's a bootleg i guess right but well yeah because people aren't buying it through regular right means. through regular yeah, yeah, yeah. well see sources. that's the problem too is if you get rid of that at the regulated level where there hasn't there hasn't really been any recorded issues you know besides like if people if it's not good to regularly put foreign substances into your lungs but if someone's using responsibly yeah. or whatever and it's like you know here and there it, they're probably just not, like alcohol it's they, not good to chronically put yeah alcohol exactly into you're your gonna liver, be fine but, here and but there the answer okay. isn't just like the answer isn't to like ban everything and arrest everyone and you know raise the prison populations to try and get rid of a substance when you when you do that it's probably going to cause more problems because the people that are already using it now and buying it legally are probably going to go get the bootleg stuff and now you're putting them in danger because <laughs> you're taking away the regulated stuff yeah right well that's kind of what happened with cannabis a little bit how it became legal in the u.s or what not in the u.s sorry not yet not yet fingers in in oregon and how do you feel about that it was it was about the cannabis hold on hold on on real quick let me finish this uh in oregon the i saw him perking up the legal form of it became you know allowed but then the illegal substances was significantly decreased as far as how much cannabis was bringing into the yeah. U.S. And that was good because, or into Oregon, because there was so much pesticides and other stuff that people yeah. weren't knowing that they were using. So it was a Which Washington actually it. tested through the fecal matter of their people, which, which is, is crazy. That is crazy. I know. Yeah, they tested yeah. their poop to find out, oh, yeah, they aren't using the illegal strains. How does, how does Australia feel about... <laughs> Have, has has it come up in Australia how the U.S. is starting to legalize cannabis? Yeah, look, oh, I mean, look, it's you know, it's a topic of conversation that will come up um, from time to time. But Australia is really sh- very strict on that stuff. So, it's oh, like, how so? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, so I mean, marijuana is is still entirely illegal. Really? Um, yeah, big trouble. Even me- if you medically? Get, um, even medically, it's. I mean, I think there are. Well, that's quite. I don't actually know the answer to that. I think. I think you can use like cbd products medically okay um but i think i think again it's fairly and and you'll have to fact check me on it but i'm pretty sure it's fairly highly regulated um and and it's you know an extreme sort of case that's surprising to me because i would not think that australia would be so conservative in that way because they're so liberal in so many other ways well yeah i mean it's interesting though as well like but the same could be said of uh we were like one of the last uh, Western, I think we were. We're the last Western country to legalize gay marriage. So really, yeah. And again, what? like, which is super weird, right? Because you think Australia, you're like, oh, that's very surprising. To me. You know, really secular, super liberal. Yeah, crocodile um, Dundee, those tight pants. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, totally. <laughs> yeah, I hundred percent. I don't even know if he had no, tight that's pants. That's a knife. <laughs> no, no, that's a I mean, knife. Did he have those little? Yeah, those little short <laughs> yeah. khaki like yeah. pant, little shorts he yeah, wore. That's yeah, true. yeah. Maybe I was reading. Yeah, that they were very figure hugging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> figure hugging. <laughs> something, yeah. something. But like also, that. like they're kind of like the most. I don't know. I can't. I mean, other than like Ireland, maybe or something. Like when I think of a country that like drinks heavily, mm. like I think of Australia being like one of the like the heaviest alcohol. You know, consumers. Yeah, we definitely have a reputation for it. And I think it is... Um, Foster's beer mostly, right? <laughs> Foster's. You know what's funny Australian about You know beer. what's funny about that, though? Mm. Yes. You so, have it there, So, probably? like, I remember when I moved here and everyone's like, oh, Oregon beer is so great. And I was like, Australian beer is way better. And I went back to Australia, right, uh, yeah. for this last year. And I was, like, so disappointed with the beer. Oh, no kidding. Oh, it's terrible. Like, it's just... It's just your standard lagers, right? Really? So like, so like you know the um, what's it called? There's a beer here at the moment. Um, uh, it's a ten barrels beer. It's pub beer. Have yeah. You guys had that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So it's kind of like everyone's kind of talking about it here, and they're like, oh, it's great. It's like just you know, it's a nice change, you know, from the heavy IPAs and things <laughs> like that. And it's like that's what we drink. Just that's it. That's all. That's your option that in Australia. Just 
pub. Beer. There's a it. ton of what is it? What's the the is it Dos Equis? Is that the the XX? Yeah, Dos Equis. Uh, Corona's like Corona's over. huge down there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone drinks Corona, like Peroni, um, okay. Asahi. Like, yeah. It's just yeah. So I was so disappointed. <laughs> That's like, funny. And so yeah. Did no, it seem I, like Australia has much of that? Like we have like the not the private beer, but what is it like? You know, craft beer. Craft beers. Yeah. Do they have a lot of craft beer going on in Australia? Not really. Like it's not as widespread. I mean, you can find it, mm-hmm. um, but it's like whereas, but here, like I can go to Roth's. Yeah. And I can, yeah. Get, I can oh, yeah. get Craft beer. You Easy. know, like can't do At that a, in a like a growler. Rainbow. Yeah. Food. Rainbow you can get food. It, like yeah, the growler rain, fills now. They do it pulled out of that. You can get fresh root beer pulled out of there. Yeah. yeah. Like it's like what the. I'm pretty sure so Rainbow good. Foods has their own little growler too. They probably do. Just. Yeah, like it it's, it's just so normal around here. It's so weird. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't, yeah. It's a, it's just our our niche. What we need niche. is a really good whiskey distiller around here. Oh, like in like in the Salem area. Mm. That would be fantastic. Wouldn't it be great? Mm. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could tell the Here's, difference between good and bad whiskey. Spe- speaking of whiskey, this this brings us up. This is not why I mentioned that, but I just thought of it because I like whiskey. But is I didn't know this, but this is a today I learned from this week is that Tabasco is aged in Jack Daniels whiskey barrels. No kidding. I really? think it's three years. It, yeah, like uh, Tabasco sauce is fermented for three years and used Jack Daniels whiskey barrels before bottling. That's amazing. Isn't that I crazy? No idea. That's incredible. I love Tabasco. Now I know why. Yeah, there you go. Jack yeah. Daniels. Yeah. Tabasco, is that synonymous with Tapatio? No. No. No? no, no very no, no. different. No, not no. even close. Well, I just yeah. feel like it's spicy, right? They're just There hot. are ones They're that are very similar to Tapatio, like what is it, Creole or something like that. It's, it's like very, very similar, but like, no. Tabasco is kind of, yeah, it's quite different. Yeah, Tabasco is, yeah, way different. Yeah. yeah. You know, they upped their sales by like 25% just by widening the mouth. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's no genius. Way. Yeah. That's genius. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, so sorry. there's all these Tabasco facts for a second. I actually don't even really drink, <laughs> not drink. I don't usually use Tabasco <laughs> that often <laughs> at all. You just know all about it. I just know about yeah. it. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if you... Uh, but the smoked Chipotle oh, Tabasco? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's outstanding. You like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, it's like literally only been in the past year that I've been up en- enough of a grown up to start eating uh, Spicy guacamole. Oh, guacamole. <sighs> oh, like our avocados. What? Oh I couldn't handle goodness. it before. Like it was the texture, it was like slimy. I, I would say was... I would put myself in the last two, three years. Really? Yeah. Two, three? Yeah. Oh no. But kidding. my wife's also allergic to them, so like before that I was like, eh, you know. Mm. But now you risk it. I, You're no, like, ah, I'll just, just eh, we'll just well, be honest. I, I don't watch this. I really like them and if I eat them, like if I eat like a, a whole one with my lunch, I feel so good. Mm. Like it it like it just makes me feel good. I don't know why. Avocado is delicious, man. It is. Oh, on toast with eggs. Oh, it's great. With oh, eggs is really good. So good. Like sunny side up eggs. Oh, yeah. I like it. Oh, my gosh. I like it too. I'm yeah. getting hungry. Um, <laughs> you can make eggs. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> speaking about eggs, talking about eggs. Yes. Did you guys hear about the news in Oregon, that there Oregon, You're just where uh, this doctor uh, <laughs> donated his- you cut Jono out? Or well, I was just changing just views, just mixing okay. it up. I'm just making sure. Uh, <laughs> he donated his sperm. Oh, yes. And uh, he donated his sperm- to was this in yours too yeah really to ohsu I have, this, I have mine and this is in mine too he donated it to ohsu which is like this large hospital you know f- right. one of our lead like top places i think it was maybe i i, I had maybe i i had read it but i'm not sure if i pasted it in there i i actually linked it like okay. i had it i was like what the um but he he donated his sperm for the purpose of a little bit of research but also so, so people could like you know have kids but he said he didn't want it to be done in oregon he said well, no, it that was out of the area that wasn't right? just his stipulation that's what they said and that's actually what but like then, donor places do to yeah. keep you if you ever have kids in that area to keep the chances of them ever meeting and like having kids themselves like, together like basically like getting web-footed kids yeah like that mm. so that they have to be a certain distance away from where the donation was made but he has like 17 so, kids now But here's the thing. He said that he... But part of the contract was that they only could use five. five. They only yeah. could oh, use five. They only could use his sperm for five fertilized eggs. Yes. And they ended up using it for 17. That he's found so far. That he's found so far that actually came to fruition. And oh. they, are they all 17 in Oregon? No, I think it was like five were in the area. Some of them were like loosely linked to his children. Like, like they had met them or been around them and stuff like that. it's like this isn't right like that you, is weird. so you know he's suing the the socks off of them 
which for having done which is fine like but i didn't i didn't did you read about how he found out yeah through um like through the ancestry like oh, and the like, 23 yeah. me and stuff like that people doing that like the dna started matching so he started putting his in to get more information on where that this was at to try and protect his family <laughs> that's so crazy Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so he said he made the donations. They probably third. never thought that that would ever be like something that was like viable for people to get figuring out like where yeah. you're, you know, Oh, was. yeah, of course. Like they like what? However long ago it was? How long ago was it? That 30 years yeah, ago so he donated. Years years ago, they're they're not like, be thinking no, no about one's ever going to have that. Now it's like a smartphone <laughs> app that you just like scan your finger and yeah. you, you know everyone that yeah. you know you made. Yeah, I've like thousands of I don't know. I think it would be kind of cool. You what? I think it'd be kind of cool. In a sense, but because of that agreement and knowing that what if his kids were to have, like, because he has his own True. kids now True. had met them or and or, like, you know, hooked up with them. And I mean, that's like, then yeah. it's not a healthy thing. Like, yeah. then it doesn't become funny anymore. <laughs> well, it's basically OHSU, like, did not take into consideration that they're making human beings out of this, <laughs> from this person. Like, basically, they're just like, oh, we're just like, we're just doing work. Like, it would but, cost us more to transport this somewhere else. Let's yeah. find local people. Yeah, yeah, that 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 that's pretty crazy. But they one they said that um, so he was paid 17. about forty dollars each time that he donated, but he doesn't remember how many times he donated. <laughs> well, and he was saying too, like, what if like one day, like, I'm a match for these people that don't have, you know, a parent or a family or whatever, and they like need a kidney or they need you know, a transplant or some kind or anything like where, where does he fall into that? Like morally now he's got this obligation knowing that this person could die with something that he could provide. Well, and so the other issue was, is that there are so many complicated things that come up. Yeah. So two, two young women reached out to him because they had, like you said, found information on ancestry.com, but then they called the fertility clinic and the fertility clinic gave his information to to them. Oh so, my gosh! So like, just there was even just worse. so many levels of like his privacy and I uh, going against that. the green agreement. I read that. a couple actually different articles that that had a little bit more detail on it. And it was just like, oh my gosh, it just keeps getting worse. Like, this, yeah, this poor guy. Terrible. Like, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. rough. Yeah. So that was just kind of a crazy one. I was so about eggs. speaking like, of oh, people yeah. getting in trouble, though, there's another another story that I'm I'm so excited about this week. And that is, did you see the lady that that got caught on camera keying this guy's brand new Model 3? Oh, it wasn't brand new. It was like 2018, but it's pretty <laughs> new. He went to a soccer game with his kid, came out, and found it, it had been keyed from like bumper to bumper. Oh. Like all the way down the side, like to the middle. Is a video? No. Oh, well, there's an, you can go watch. So I'll put the link up there. And it's, it's kind of, it would be kind of hard to show. But so it, it he get his, key, his car gets keyed and he's like, who's this lady? You know, who, or no, who did this? So he goes and he looks on the sentry mode in his oh, Tesla cool. and has a video of her doing the whole thing, like trying to hide it oh and God. do it and has a picture of it. So he's like, he reported it to the police, gave him the video and he's like, I'm also going to put it on social media. And it went bananas. And then the police were getting so many hits for who this lady was. She turned herself in. Well, it's over $2,000 worth of damage, which makes it a felony. Uh-huh. And she was arrested. She Good. turned herself in and she's since been arrested. Good. And that's crazy. It's hilarious. But it's just like, oh my gosh, like people, number one, who knows why she did it? She hasn't made any statement or anything, but she just looked angry that it was an electric car, yeah. which is like such a, a petty thing to be angry about. Well, anyway. speaking of, um, this is something that I saw you had kind of referenced earlier in your notes. Um, like as far as Tesla's, you know, like basically in sentry mode, like they're recording everything around them, they're, right? They're recording a rolling 10 minutes. And if they get alerted to something happening, they clip that 10 minutes and save it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's always rolling. So this brings up a really On interesting... On nine cameras. Which is amazing. Around the whole car. This brings up a really interesting topic, though, of your digital data mm. and the your rights to digital data. Oh, yeah. With Sanders. Yeah. What he well, said. no, Andrew Yang. Yeah, Yang. That's who it was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically, he is also, you know, pushing for the rights to a person owning whatever their personal data is that they've created. 
So even like, you know, your texts, your Facebook posts, your Facebook posts, your Twitter posts, Twitter posts, all this stuff like that is something that should be private and be the government needs to have a subpoena to give with it with a end user license agreement. They can't say they own it. Hmm. Yeah. Which I kind of like. I do like that. I think it gets complicated. I think it gets complicated, but I think it's kind of a good thing to push for. Yeah. Because of what's going on like in China right now. Yeah. Right. Like with the Huawei stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with with Huawei, but also with like Hong Kong. Mm. Like Oh um, well, yeah, the yeah the well, situation how, how, what, that's going on there. Have I was in Hong Kong like last week. No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I had a layover. I had a layover what? there on my way here. Are you serious? Yeah, I went through Hong Kong. I was only in the airport. Did you jump out and rip down some face? It was cams? like, nah. You know, I thought about it. I was like, I, but my layover just wasn't long enough. Well, Otherwise, so, I totally would have. So <laughs> Apple, Apple paid the uh, pulled, Can you pulled the app. See a Jonah with a face mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, can we see a picture of him? We pull up. Like, like dude, that's hanging him. off a camera. Um, they Apple pulled the the protest app mm. off the app store said it was illegal and they have like what yeah to like um it was another thing that i linked in here but Wait, why would it be illegal they were saying because it was getting people to do illegal things so this app is basically like a, it's kind of like a, a hot spot for knowing where protests are happening so it's like we're sending this is this app is sending people to do illegal things so they pulled it seemingly to like you know appease china and they have since recanted and put it back. Really? Yep. Hmm. That's a big deal. Yeah. That is a big deal. That's and big it looked deal. like it looked like an app that basically was like Uber for protesting. Like you don't call it to it, but it just shows you well, like where the nearest protest it's a is really, to you. Really really interesting dynamic with Hong Kong being, you know, kind of under the authority and continuing increasing authority of China although they're trying to hold on to their own independence yeah. and China having such a strong control over data and internet and anything that you know, would be, you know, slanderous to their government. It's interesting to see how the Hong Kong people are going to respond to that. Have you in Australia, has that been a conversation that you've heard at all? Um, you know, I, it comes up a little bit. Um, I think it's probably cause you guys are closer in, in a way of like, you know, yeah, and it's look, it's in our news a lot as well because we have so in in Sydney in particular, um, Melbourne too. Um, we have a really high population of um, Asian of Asian of Asian immigrants um, yeah, who, totally. who live there, um, and and a lot of those um, people come from Hong Kong or other areas in mainland uh-huh. China. Um, so it's definitely something that's that's quite a big topic. Um, I worked with. A lady who is is from Hong Kong, and so she's constantly like on Facebook talking about it and and keeping everyone sort of up to date on what's going on. But it's it's a big it's a big topic. But I actually think, um, I don't know. It's it's controversial, contra- controversial, obviously. But I um I kind of commend what they're doing in Hong Kong. I think it's actually awesome and so um, bold. is and yeah, and the bold. rest of us should be paying attention. I think it's a really cool I th- thing. I think we should yeah. be paying attention a lot more. Yep. It's it's a fight against tyranny, essentially, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. It's a fight against the tyranny of government-controlled ideas and government-controlled... Um, Which is much different than social programs. Mm. Absolutely. I think people get those kind of blended way too closely together. Well, but, but social programs, in my you know understanding, is more of a opportunity. It's a, it's a way of providing for... An, for a, a population right. whereas you know i'm just social- i'm just speaking to the fact that sometimes people get those melded together mm. they, they think that that uh that this tyranny but or, it is it does seem like a form of social, tyranny socialism yeah. if it's the, if it's required in, if the, sense, saying, in yeah. the sense that um, you have to pay for it the government owns the ideas versus like socialism is like we we help each other the government mm-hmm. requires you to help pay for this right is that and that feels like a form of tyranny to some people i think yeah but but it's not the same as like um, communism where everyone communally owns everything. Mm. Yeah, socialism and communism are strange. Uh, I, I, I don't have enough. But I hear people a, use those words synonymously. Yeah, and, and they're but not. But they're not. They're very different. They are very different. That's true because mm-hmm. communism is communal. Is in that communal? What, but the government owns every like they own that yeah. that entity. Basically, in my understanding, communism is a way of a government using uh, it's a government excuse to control everything yeah yeah and i'm not again i'm not making an argument for either one of those that's not that i'm just making a distinction between those two things 
if people were to get a little mm-hmm. heated because they do around those topics. But I do want to bring up one thing because I know we're getting low on time. Yeah. But, um, Jono, did you know that I'm colorblind? I did not know that. No. You can't tell by looking at me. Yeah, it's no. Not like, no, it's not yes. catching either. Jordan had his uh, birthday recently, everybody. Yeah. I did. Yeah, I did see that. Yep. Yeah. Happy birthday. And you got a pretty cool gift. I did. Um, I got these colorblind glasses. So cool. That are supposed to help with um, seeing different colors. And and they I have I have a video. I want to look at them too. Um, yeah, you can look at them. I I've been told that you don't see much things different through them. If you have good appropriate good working rods and cones, right? And they don't—they can't obviously create all colors, but like, they definitely. I've decided I don't like the color red <laughs> very well. I feel like. Um, well, they seem pretty red. I, this is going to sound really insensitive, but like, I ha- I have a child who struggles with things sometimes, and I I feel like somebody who's like, like, on the spectrum with loud sounds, mm. like what some colors are like. I don't know what to do with them and I just want to scream. Like I, I'm like, nah, I don't like it. And people have tagged me in videos of these things for years and thought that I would cry when I looked through them <laughs> and everything. And I did not. I do have the video if people wanted to see it, us to play it. We could play it quietly in the background. Um and my wife was very nice and got them for me but basically but it I, wasn't very bright out when, when yeah when i tried them for the so first time. your impression of color glasses for color blind people is it wasn't what you had expected at well first? so the videos make it seem like i put them on and my whole world is going to immediately change and uh, it, they don't even claim that if you look through their literature yeah. they're like you need to wear these for like 10 hours for a week before you'll and, really in a bright environment yeah in a bright environment and yeah. like in overtime and there's definitely things that i can see that i couldn't see before like i wore them on a drive to seattle and like car i truth like on like total honesty like i did not know for like 30 years of my life why you would ever put a red flag on the back of something sticking out of a truck it's like why would you put the darkest color in the entire spectrum Mm, on the back of a truck you're just gonna run into it like no one's gonna see that doesn't help anybody well now i know holy crap stands out like the a red car goes by like i understand now why a bull gets angry at red i don't like it and i understand (laughs) why cops are like look at that red car he's going really fast yeah like they stand out they do stand out and i never knew that yeah i'm a fan of red i don't know if it's something the color that i'm like my favorite but it's okay so how do you see red it's just really dull yeah okay interesting but those glasses increase the they do increase it like they darken everything else and those things kind of they pop a little more so like essentially like the average person that has color deficiency of some kind sees around like ten thousand different shades and the the normal seeing eye sees around fifty thousand so there's just a ton that are blurred together Mm. dude i'm gonna throw down some today i learns (laughs) <laughs> Today I learned some interesting things. Instead of shower thoughts. I yeah. Like well, I, I got a couple of shower thoughts I want to throw out there too. But before I do some today I learned, is there anything else you wanted to hit on? No. Okay. I don't think so. I uh, I got some pretty. If int- people really want to see that video, I could post it on our Facebook. Page, yeah, though. we should just post it though. Okay, that'd be cool. Um. So I learned today that all the audience members on Judge Judy, I don't know if anybody, everybody out there, most people have watched the show or experienced it at some point in their life. Um, all the people on Judge Judy are paid actors. Mm-hmm. And they in would order, have to be, wouldn't they? In order, no, why? Because why they're on TV. Be? So, well, I don't know. It kind of frustrates me because I feel like they, sh- they like that, that just that robs me from the realness of it. But all of them, in order to be like on the show, mm-hmm. all the actors have to be in the Screen Actors Guild. I wonder if they have to do that. Like they aren't before, but they have this case that they want to see, and they have to join it. I don't know, but I know they're all paid actors and <laughs> they like, all have to be. In why are you shooting holes too. in this theory? Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that I learned today that all the um, they're called Porgs. I didn't know they were called Porgs on Star Wars. Yeah, on Star Wars. So yeah. like with number. <laughs> have you seen Star Wars? Like the number, like the little they look like they look like little Furbies or little. Oh, like, they look yeah. like a Furby penguin. Yeah. OK. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Furby penguin. Yeah. Um, but the only reason they, they hadn't intended on putting those on the show. But, they're like the coolest little thing. Yeah, they put them on those. The, they were on the little island when they were showing like Ray yep. and Luke, yeah. like meeting each other. Yep. Um, they had no intentions on even putting them in the movie, uh, but they couldn't get rid of all the puffins. 
the puffin birds from <laughs> oh, the island. Oh gosh! So they just put those. Over so the they top put. Of them? So they put these little. Yeah, pork. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, because they couldn't get rid of all the puffin birds on the island in Ireland when they were filming in Ireland. I was like, that's a cool little fact. That is pretty funny. Yeah. Um, here's a tale I learned. I learned that over a hundred marijuana plants sprouted on the Anaheim Stadium playing field in 1976 after the Who played a concert there. <laughs> no way. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's interesting. Oh, it would yeah. be. They must not have touched the field for quite a while for those plants to have sprouted. No, like, I don't know. Or there was more than that, and those were the hardy ones. Uh, That's interesting. Uh, Today I learned that the chemical formula of salt, um, of the salt that makes solid cheese smooth, Mm -hmm. um, and it spells out (laughs) N-A-C-H-O. No. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. The chemical formula of the salt... That makes solid cheese smooth. That's hilarious. Spells out nacho. <laughs> Pretty cool. That's fantastic. Uh, today I learned that Japan created a fire alarm for deaf people. And this device works by spraying vaporized wasabi into the air. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> what? I mean, they do have an excess of it. You know, it makes sense. <laughs> Maybe. You know, what are we doing with all this wasabi? Being like, what do we do with this wasabi, Why is guys? my face burning? <laughs> oh, there's a real fire in the house. <laughs> Wait, it's for it's for deaf people. You yes, so they can't so if the they don't have enough problems, let's make sure <laughs> yeah, their yeah. eyes go blind from the wasabi <laughs> that we're going to spray into their. That seems like a I cool never said joke. it was a good idea. Oh my <laughs> god! Um, so today I learned the Spanish once granted automatic Spanish citizenship to Irish people, and it was due to their belief that the Irish were actually a group of ancient Spaniards that left from Spain with a Spanish king called Mil Espain uh, to settle the island of Ireland. So the Spanish at one time believed all the people in Ireland were from Spain. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting... That is interesting. <sighs> interesting little fact. Yeah. Little tidbit. Here's a, here's a shower thought. Okay. If humans colonize the moon, it will probably attract retirement homes as the weaker gravity will allow for the elderly to feel stronger. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that is amazing that is actually a really good idea that actually would well i mean i think it'd be hard on their heart maybe but the pressure it would take off their spinal cords oh yeah and their knees their joints and all of a sudden all that pain just is gone the last 10 years of your life just go to the moon oh, this guy's got it right on the wall yeah, yeah there you there go yeah, that's right he's my man right i don't know how he's gonna drink yeah. that i'm still trying to figure that out <laughs> yeah good point yeah he's gonna have to have some type of str- straw system um okay share thoughts yeah How about this? The easiest way to make people uncomfortable is to ride an elevator facing the wall instead of the door. (laughs) I would love to do that. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try that. Okay. So also, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't explain this, but I've done this and it does make people very uncomfortable. Get in an elevator. Don't go face the wall. Like don't, that's not what it's saying. It's not saying to walk back and put your nose on the wall. It's turn around when you're at the door. And just oh, face, yeah. and right, face right. everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it. That Next would definitely. Time, and then to make It'd it, be funny if several people did. If you want to make yeah, it yeah, any yeah. better, you just say, now that I've got you all here. <laughs> now, that <we're> all, <laughs> no, now that I have you all in private. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> oh, let's see. A shower thought. Um, a $20 coin that could buy a high quality suit in 1930 Ooh. could still buy a high quality suit today. It's true. Because $20 gold back then yeah. would be worth a significant worth amount a lot more today here. to be able to buy a suit. Yeah. True self-control is being able to resist eating popcorn during the previews at the movies. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I've not done that. <laughs> no. I like ate like half my popcorn yesterday when I was there before yeah, the I don't, movie. I don't think I've ever like, done that. <laughs> yeah. That <never> um, <laughs> we can literally say anything about the Amish online <laughs> because they won't find out. <laughs> That's that is true. <laughs> if two stutterers meet, there is a big chance one of them of one of them thinking that the other is making fun of them. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's really good. Uh goalie's goal in life is to have no goals. It's true. <laughs> it's kind of a funny thought. <laughs> a goalie's goal in life is to have no goals. <laughs> Here's one that uh my coworker read to me the other day. It says this spilling the beverage you just paid for 
is the adult equivalent equivalent to letting go of the balloon. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or like dropping the sandwich you just made. Yeah. Or something like that. Always lands Yeah, down. peanut butter and jelly sandwich, not a good, especially if it's one slice of bread. Uh, last one I have for those kiddos out there, cartoon characters only sneeze when it's relevant to the plot. You never see a cartoon character walk just through and just sneeze. randomly sneeze and they don't address it. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Like, I feel like the only cartoon that would work in is Rick and Morty. <laughs> that's true. But it would <laughs> Do you ever watch Rick and Morty? No, I've seen like oh, no. snippets. But like, it would still have, yeah, you got to yeah. watch it. It would still have meaning. He hit the Mises box. Mises. Oh, people probably can't hear it. <laughs> I could hear it in mine. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, once fully autonomous vehicles become standard, we will actually have to leave on time because they probably won't speed for us. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Or maybe it'd be easier for them to speed because they would be more regulated with the other traffic around them. But that would that be speeding or that just be everyone's going the same? I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting thought. They won't let us they won't let us speed though. There will come a time where it won't be possible. Yeah. 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 It's true. I believe that. Yeah. Dude, that's I, it, man. I robot man. That's all I got, guys. Uh, we're gonna go and enjoy the Joker tonight. Yeah. John O, Jordan, and myself are gonna go bust yes. out a little bit of a. I don't know how he laughs, but something funny. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So we're going to go watch the Joker and have some good uplifting, emotionally healing uh, bro, you know, time. bro time watching, you know, a very calm and relaxing movie. Yeah, it's probably not like violent. And no violence. Like controversy yeah. at all. No controversy. Politically correct. I'm excited. Mm. Yeah, I am too. He's it's probably the most like um, <coughs> well thought of villain in the villain world. Mm. Actually, he is probably one of the most. That's probably true. Yeah. I've all right. Dude, that's it. Well, guys, thanks for listening to Testing Normal. Episode number 34. Like us. Let us know what you don't like. Subscribe to us on YouTube, or what you Facebook, do like. Instagram. Um, and we appreciate all of you. Jono, sir, it was a pleasure. Thanks, oh, brother. Pleasure is all mine. Thanks, Super guys. Super fun talking with you, man. We'll have to have you on again soon. And uh, that's it. Have a good night, guys. Peace, Peace out. out.